Tommy Cashman, yesterday, the 3rd of April 2023, was sentenced to life imprisonment with a minimum term of 42 years at Manchester Crown Court for the murder of nine-year-old Olivia Pratt Corbell. Now, following this case, I've seen two questions that have arisen. The first is, why was Cashman convicted of murder when the person that he intended to kill, Joseph Nee, was not the actual victim? And secondly, why was Cashman only given a life sentence, albeit with a minimum term of 42 years, rather than being given a whole life order? In this video, I'll explain why. Welcome back to Andy on Crime, where I look at high profile criminal cases and pick out quirks or interesting parts of the law, which sometimes leads to unpopular or controversial decisions. And I try and explain them in a way so that people can understand why those decisions have been taken. So in the case of Tommy Cashman, let's start off by looking at the facts of the case. So the facts of the case are that on the 22nd of August 2022, Tommy Cashman murdered Olivia Pratt Corbell, who was nine years old. Cashman, armed with a gun, was pursuing another drug dealer called Joseph Nee through the streets, attempting to shoot him. Olivia's mother, Cheryl, who heard the commotion outside, had opened her front door to see what was going on. Nee, seeing this door open, ran through it, and then Olivia's mother attempted to close the door. Cashman fired a number of shots through the door, one of which went through Cheryl's hand, wounding her. Tragically, Olivia, who had been startled by the sounds outside, had come downstairs to see what was going on, and one of the bullets fired by Cashman hit her in the chest, and tragically, she died. Cashman then fled the scene. Following a police investigation and an informant coming forward, Cashman was arrested and charged with three offences. One of murder against Olivia, one of attempted murder against Joseph Nee, and one of wounding with intent against Olivia's mother, Cheryl. He stood trial at Manchester Crown Court, denying the charges, but he was convicted on all charges. And yesterday, the 3rd of April 2023, he was sentenced to life imprisonment with a minimum term of 42 years, which means he may never be released from prison if the parole board is not satisfied he is safe to be released. In the next part of the video, I'm going to explain why Cashman was guilty of murder, despite the fact that the person he intended to kill or cause really serious harm by shooting was Joseph Nee rather than Olivia. Now, to understand why Cashman was guilty of murder, we need to talk about something called transferred malice. The offence of murder is committed where the defendant unlawfully kills, i.e. he's not acting in self-defence or some other justified killing, he unlawfully kills another person. And he intends to kill that person or cause really serious harm to them. Now, the first part of the offence is known as the guilty act or actus reus to give it its Latin phrase. And the second part is known as the guilty mind or the mens rea, which is the mental part of the offence. And the prosecution has to prove both the guilty act and the guilty mind in order to convict someone of a criminal offence. But in the case of Olivia Pratt Corbell, the actions of Cashman were that he unlawfully killed Olivia, but his intention was to shoot and therefore either kill or cause really serious harm to Joseph Nee. So this is where transferred malice would come in. So if you look at this diagram on the screen, we can see Cashman at the top. On the left, you have the intention to kill Nee, the mens rea. And then on the right, we have Olivia, who Cashman actually killed. Because Cashman intended to kill Nee, but actually killed Olivia, his malice, i.e. his guilty mind or his mens rea, is transferred from Nee to Olivia. So when the jury were considering this case, they would have been asked to answer three principal questions. Firstly, did Cashman fire the gun? Secondly, did Cashman unlawfully kill Olivia? i.e. he wasn't acting in self-defence or any other justified killing. And the third thing 
was that did he intend to kill or cause really serious harm to Joseph Nee? Now, the answer to all three of those questions were yes, and therefore Cashman was guilty of murder of Olivia, despite having intended to kill Nee, because his malice was transferred from Nee to Olivia. If we now look at the sentencing of Cashman, we can look at the question of why he was not given a whole life order. The first thing to say is that for the offence of murder, there is an automatic life sentence which is imposed once convicted. The judge will then set what's known as a tariff, which is the minimum period that a defendant must spend in prison before being considered eligible for release by the parole board. And if the parole board is not satisfied that the individual is safe to be released to the public, they will not be released. In exceptional cases, the judge can impose what is known as a whole life order. This is where the defendant will spend the rest of their life in prison without being eligible to be considered for parole. At the time of recording, there are only 66 prisoners currently serving whole life orders. Now, in this case, the judge determined that a whole life order was not appropriate and instead awarded a minimum term of 42 years, which is one of the longest minimum terms that I've seen in my time as a criminal practitioner. The reason for this was that the judge found that Cashman did not have a premeditated intention to kill Olivia. He had gone out and intended to kill Joseph Nee. Now, the sentencing guidelines for whole life orders state that where there is the murder of a child, where there is a significant degree of premeditation or planning, a whole life order should be imposed. Now, some of you might be thinking, well, does his intention not just transfer as is the case of transferred malice for the offence of murder? And the answer to that is no. The judge can only sentence an individual to a whole life order if he believes that Cashman went out with the premeditated intention of killing Olivia, which in this case, and on the facts, was clearly not the case, albeit he was still guilty on the basis of transferred malice. As a result of this, the judge determined that a whole life order was not appropriate. And one further thing to add is that the premeditated murder of an adult does not automatically attract a whole life order, whereas the premeditated murder of a child does. In the end, the judge determined that 42 years as a minimum term was appropriate in this case. So to summarise, Cashman was convicted of murder on the basis of transferred malice, whereby he intended to kill Joseph Nee and actually killed Olivia. And as a result, his malice, i.e. his guilty mind or mens rea, was transferred from Nee to Olivia and therefore he was guilty of murder. And on the question of whether he should have been awarded a whole life order, the judge determined that because he had no premeditated intention to kill Olivia, she tragically was the person that died as a result of him shooting, but he intended to kill Joseph Nee. A whole life order was not appropriate and therefore 42 years minimum term in accompanied with a life sentence was appropriate. Thanks for watching. I hope this video did clarify some things about this case. If you did find it informative, please consider giving it a like. And if you'd like to see more content from me, then please consider subscribing to my channel. Thanks for watching. Take care.